Hello, today for review I've got a really interesting, exciting model of INEA monitors, it's Shozy Polo 39. I already reviewed regu regular version of Polo, probably the first uh, hybrid that utilized Electret uh, Twitter by Sony on, and uh, now there are a lot of other similar models, but uh, Shozy was probably the pioneer or, or at least one of the pioneers. And then they've introduced upgraded or actually it's not even upgraded you know it's retuned uh, from scratch model named Polo 39 uh, it uses uh, smaller dynamic driver it's uh, just 10 millimeter but it's really good but it, I will speak about sound a bit later but they now using two as is uh, self-biased electrostatic t tweeters per each earpiece I actually don't know the exact uh, retail price, I will ask it and will put into the description as well as links to the shop, but it should be slightly above $1000 plus minus, so just if you will be interested look in at the video's description. And now let's have a closer look. Package and presentation of these INEA monitors are done on really superb level. Outer cardboard box with Symphonium, it's cable Symphonium here used, and here are brief technical specifications: 10 mm dynamic driver plus two electrostatic drivers, two-way passive crossover, low level of harmonic distortion, 12 ohms of impedance, and 101 decibels of sensitivity, and really wide frequency response. So they are easier to drive compared with regular Polo, Polo and I think it's a good thing. Inside of the outer box there is another one, so let me carefully put it out, or not so carefully, so it's wrapped into fabric with a lot of stickers. Sorry, it was a bit noisy. And inside there is another box. Hush. So it has pleasant soft feel, nice to touch, it's kind of fabric. It, it's held by magnets. Here is a pouch with warranty card. So Symphonium select cast wire inside you will have kind of postcard with information about the inea monitors and multi-layered packaging here great wooden hand polished case for cable inea monitors themselves and also underneath you will have a small box with additional accessories. So you will have cleaning clothes, two adapters, airplane and 6.3 mm. I really doubt that anyone will use them in the airplane. And a nice set of tips, three pair of silicones and one, two pair of forms, so really good accessory set, great box, nice presentation. And of course about the design. For Polo 39 Shozy selected a bit different case, they've learned the lessons of regular Polo. As you can see regular Polo is much thicker and case their shells are noticeably bulkier because big driver inside and a lot of wiring and schematics. So new Polo 39 fitting uh, better and they have a uh, slimmer profile, a bit different shape, so a bit better fit, but I didn't have any issues with regular Polo and neither do I with uh, Polo 39. Different faceplate here they've used stabilized wood and this faceplate is called Mother of Pearl. Nice ergonomic shape, everything is rounded, so metal spouts with dual bores inside, protective grill, 
leap for holding the tips and if we look inside we can see the dynamic driver we can see that uh, part of energizer for the for this electrode super tweeters and two tweeters located close to the spout and they have different uh, tubes so they go separately to the spout and uh, only here they've ended and uh, length of spout is ni nice so sound isolation is about average enough for noisy street or for public transport but subway would be a bit too loud great build quality but i think it's something that you can expect S nice color semi-transparent shell i think it's you know it's improvement of course regular polar was normal but new uh, polar 39 looks great but what is the one of the most stunning things here is the stock cable they're using regular uh, two pin connector so right ear piece and left ear piece it's they are a bit hard to connect properly so just look attentively and be careful really tight connectors i won't insert them fully now because they're really hard to pull when they are inserted tightly but uh, nice connectors made of metal stylish looking right, right is marked with red rings and left one with blue ear hooks without memory wire and cable itself it's that symphonium cable and it's nothing but spectacular average in terms of softness but pretty thick audiophilic really durable almost zero microphonic nice big uh, splitter it's heavy so it's pulling cable down providing a better uh, cable fit big noticeable splitter and below the actually not splitter chin slider and below the splitter it goes braided audiophilic rope thick cable it goes way down to this also pretty big but of course audiophilic level jack i'm kidding of course but everything looks reliable and stylish and that's what you can expect from the premium cable so cable itself you cost pretty lot of money i think and idea of putting high-end cable to the expensive in-ear monitors i think it's a good move from shozy so to summarize everything great build quality stylish attractive design and i suppose a good durability in terms of sound, Polo 39 is uh, heavily retuned compared to regular Polo. Compression I will do a bit later, but anyway, describing the sound of this model, I will reference regular Polo. But uh, they just retuned it from from lows to uh, to highs, so from from bass to treble, so from bottom to top, so. In short, you've got an idea, they are totally retuned. They require a burn-in about 40 hours or even more. I gave them about 80 hours of burn-in. Not sure when sound change did stop, but after 80 hours it's definitely settled. And of course they require proper tip selection to give you the best fit because otherwise you will lose base uh, quantity and quality and sound will be seen and lifeless so in general tuning polo 39 is closer to neutrality closer to so-called audiophilic tuning they are more focused on the resolution and micro detailization so if you didn't like the a bit softer upper mids in the regular polo this one is an option for you Bass here is faster, it's a bit less uh, accented uh, and uh, a bit less weighty compared to regular Polo, but it still has enough weight, but it became tighter, faster and less accented, so you know it's drier bass, it's like uh, bass of Polo went to crossfit and now it's drier, faster, more technical, uh, with better texturing, but weight is less also depth is really good it goes on to the almost 
well maybe not the maximum depth but goes really deep and of course it controlled well all over the whole low frequencies so nice uh, engaging tuning uh, suiting uh, all genres and styles but of course if you like accented lows if you like additional weight probably regular polar or some other model with more accent on bass will, will be a better option for you and example i've got well maybe not the most complex track but really fun and enjoyable it's another one by the dust uh, it's famous bass line uh, it's when queen decided to create some disco song and of course this lively and rich bass line is, is played perfectly by Paula. all that bass textures all that weight all that body of the instrument you will have Mids are also played by the dynamic driver. I'm not sure where is this, uh, where is their crossover has cutting frequencies, but uh, definitely electro, uh, electro tweeters are responsible for the higher frequencies. So mids are played by the dynamic driver, and it's uh, typical well-tuned dynamic driver mids. Normal resolution, not as resolving as multi-balanced armature models, but uh, still nice resolution, good body of the instruments, good weight uh, of the vocals, focus on the macro dynamics, really good with different blows, screams and uh, other sudden changes of sound not uh, to uh, need picking not trying to highlight all the issues with record or with source uh, so a bit more to the f more on the forgiving side but at the same time they definitely benefit from good high quality records really good in representing emotions and uh, really nice in staging noticeably bigger than average not the most not the biggest one but close to the, to the best results in width and a bit less in depth but with good layering so really nice uh, imaginary stage but of course stage is subjective thing and as an example for the mid frequencies i've got probably it's Sigurd Ronvaldson or Sigurd Jur Ronvaldson I'm not sure how to read this letter in Serbian language it's J how it should be read, uh, read in the native language of Sigurd I'm not sure but it's a great example of the Scandinavian approach to the recording and uh, as usual for the Scandinavian uh, artists it's great uh, record with crazy attention to the all nuances and all details so it's kind of avant-garde jazz or simply some avant-garde instrumental music and black snake is full of uh, fast guitar movements sometimes it's sounding a bit melancholic sometimes it explodes with emotions but anyway it's recorded perfectly with a lot of uh, realism with a lot of this uh, tiny nuances and this in-ear monitors played uh, in a really lively and engaging way and of course treble as you can easily guess treble here is one of the strongest parts regular Paula showed that these electrostatic super tweeters are really capable of representing really rich, intense uh, treble, and here they've used two of them, and thanks to that it improved treble extension, and what is even more important, it improved the uh, weight of the treble, and you know, it's uh, weight of the treble is thing that is hard to describe when you didn't hear it because usually you know if you listen to some inexpensive in-ear monitors like well relatively inexpensive 100 dollars 200 dollars some hybrid model with normally tuned treble you know their treble is nice they are pretty natural with normal attacks and decays, ok extension and so on. And you think uh, actually what could be better and when you listen to some high-end models like from $1000 and more, especially new models with uh, 
piezo tweeters with this electrode tweeters you understand that uh, treble plays important role in music actually treble themselves uh, don't, don't have uh, usually some instruments in the upper treble area but at the same time time this area is responsible for different overtones and for all that nuances that uh, usually considered audiophiliac or high-end and uh, this is the part that gives you that sense of realism that sense of the room that sense of the surrounding because all overtones go there and if you cut that overtones you won't notice it instantly but if you switch quickly from some model with good layering and not so good layering you will learn to know the difference and this is the case when treble well maybe not perfect but it's really close to perfection in uh, at, at least to my taste because you know all tastes are different they have really good extension so of course uh, some properly some recorded tracks are required because uh, modern compressed tracks usually have uh, some issues with treble it's often noticeable in high-end in-ear monitors and uh, they require something properly recorded something audiophilic level like chesky records ecm recordings deutsche gramophon 2l you know you probably know that labels that do their job well and with such records they re really shine great attacks and decays really lifelike really good resolution almost perfect weight and uh, really good layering you know better weight and layering i've heard only in few high-end models that i've tested first of all it's han but they are cl coming really close to the han that costs uh, two times more but of course if you don't like extended treble or if you're listening to the music that has issues with treble with compression if you listen to a lot of music with compression for example in the treble area probably it won't be the best choice for you but if you listen to the audiophilic recordings and so on it would be really great uh, option and as an example, I've got track that I often, well, not track, albums that I often use as an example of good treble. It's Leila Martial. I'm, I'm sorry in advance if someone from France is looking my reviews and probably Ministry of Foreign Affairs of France will ban me when I try, when I will try to read the name of this track, but I will, anyway, I will try to do that. I will take the risk. It's, uh, go back. Quit la cap, ili quit la cap, quit la cap, quit la cap. Yeah, E is silent here. Quit la cap, uh, it's one of the best female vocals, really uh, good in terms of record with a lot of overtones, lot of tiny slightest nuances. You know, you can enjoy this music in some inexpensive model in AI monitors, but only expensive ones will show you the full potential and definitely Polo 39 managed to do that because you will have the rich female vocal with great sense of realism and a lot of overtones. So to summarize everything pretty naturally tuned model with great treble and uh, good mids and nice detailed bass model created for those who like more natural signature with good treble and not for those who are treble phobic or for those who like accented low frequencies they are easier to drive so some mid tire or high, higher and dub will be okay but of course they require nice resolution so to my taste, perfect pairing is Ibasso and uh, Aston Kern dubs, but if you like more emotional representation, Kane and 6.2, for example, will also do the trick. Also, Fio M M11 would be a nice option, but I think that uh, coming soon M11 Pro will be a bit better. And briefly about compressions, of course, first one is regular Pola. More bass here, noticeably more, but with a bit less resolution. Mids are about the same, but Polo 39 is more resolving, especially on the upper mids. And treble has similar extension, resolution, attacks, and decays, but Polo 39 offering more weight. 
So it's not 100% upgrade, because if you like base signature here, here in Polo 39 you will have less base. But mid and treble is definitely, well, not definitely, but noticeable upgrade. Two other models that I could mention, it's uh, Campfire Audio Atlas, um, and Atlas is different, it has more bass, more accent, a bit more V-shaped signature, so mids are more recessed, and treble is good, really, really good in Atlas, especially for the single dynamic drivers, but of course Polo 39 has more extension, more resolution and everything like that. And Campfire Audio Andromeda. Andromeda is more resolving on mids and it's noticeable they are more focused on the micro detailization. They are a bit faster on the lows but with a bit less weight. It's, you know, typical balanced armature versus dynamic driver. I, I wonder, will I manage to get limited Andromeda because it's really interesting. I want to test them probably in some future but okay, it's off topic. So, and on the treble... Uh, Polo 39 is a bit more resolving and extension, but difference isn't huge, because Andromeda is an example of nicely tuned uh, balanced armatures in the treble area. So, Polo 39 is another really good and interesting experiment by Shozi that uh, gave uh, really good outcome, nice sound, especially for those who like treble. You can get them in universal version or you can get them as a custom. And as usual, Shozi once again proved that they never create regular sound because they always experimenting, they always creating, creating something unusual and Polo 39 is a good example of that. Thank you for attention.